Go ahead and call the USD 49 Board of Education board meeting for Monday, February 12th to order. First item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. <coughs> Been moved by board member Schwartz. Second. Seconded by board member Adams. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Next item on the agenda is audience participation. No takers. All right. Moving on to the next item, uh, which is communication from other organizations. Do we have anything on that, John? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item, uh, which is school spotlights. And John? We have several spotlights. One I ended up <coughs> identifying, congratulating uh, uh, Hayes Middle School seventh grader um, Mackenzie Hagerman for winning the 62nd Ellis County Spelling Bee. Mackenzie's the daughter of Fred and Amber. Uh, Hagerman. Uh, second place honors went to uh, eighth grader uh, Carson Brookshire. Uh, Carson's the son of Bruce and Lisa Brookshire. Um, really incredible students representing uh, Hayes Middle School. They did a wonderful job at the state uh, spelling bee. <coughs> and then the other would be, we've heard a little bit about this, but we're really uh, getting to that point where there's going to be a regular uh, broadcasting for Hayes High uh, Tribe Radio. Uh, we end up, uh, they'll start in February. Uh, students presented the programming information to uh, schools administration this uh, past fall. Instructor Jim <coughs> Ballman has been working with junior Isaiah Schindler, uh, junior Jackson Stanton, senior Carlos uh, Sanchez, and sophomore Zoe Buffington to get this tribe radio up and running. Equipment and licensing for the radio <coughs> station were purchased out of funds allocated for uh, 489 News. Tribe Radio uh, piloted its first program in January. They're going to continue to work through fine-tuning in the programming before it's consistently broadcasted uh, this February. Uh, radio station will share news, weather, sports, music, and Hayes High happenings. Then we end up having a, a thanks going out to the <coughs> NEA Reading Circle program. They do donated $531 worth of books, and those ended up going to Hayes High School and Hayes Middle School Libraries. We had a thousand dollars Perkins grant that was awarded uh, to the high school. Uh, it was for a Rockler bench dog cast iron router table. Uh, the proposed equipment will be used in project based activities within the wood fundamentals and production wood technology curriculum. Uh, Project-based activity is going to focus around three production methods, and that's uh, job production, which tends to be uh, singular in nature, the batch production, which is group type <coughs> production, and then flow production, which uh, tends to be repetitive or mass quantity production. Uh, students will complete projects using one or more of the three above mentioned production methods while not being limited to specific materials or machine processes, which is the current classroom environment. Uh, students in Fundamental Woods will use the proposed equipment in a flow or mass production system to complete projects while Production Woods students will produce projects in a batch and job production system. 
uh, through the proposed activities, students will manipulate a diverse range of materials and processes, including wood, plastics, and laminates. Machine setups will require precision measure measurements and precise calculations in the development and use of jigs and fixtures into production processes. The project-based activities will require testing and prototyping to verify material choice, joinery, quality control, and final assembly. I think the main idea behind this for everybody to understand is the intent of trying to end up making it more specific uh, job related when students are actually going to go look for a particular job. This goes in line with what they would end up getting outside of uh, uh, high school um, studies as well in trying to prepare them for those particular jobs. Hayes High Athletics has uh, students signing at Fort Hayes State University. That's uh, very exciting. We end up having uh, Hunter Brown, Dylan Sh Schmidberger, Kyler uh, Conkey, uh, Trey Van Pelt, the four seniors signed uh, on February 7th to play football there at Fort Hayes State University. Uh, Shanna Dinkle was named Businesswoman of the Year here in Hayes. Congratulations to her for being recognized as the 2018 Hayes Area Chamber of Commerce Businesswoman of the Year. And that was at the annual chamber banquet. Uh, very proud of Shanna for her leadership, compassion for others, and her drive to make us all better. Um, we end up having Roosevelt celebrated the uh, 50th birthday. Uh, students and staff celebrated that birthday the last week in January. <clears throat> the school celebrated different themed days to explore the history and times of previous decades. Uh, Monday the fifth graders uh, were able to dress uh, like it was the 90s. Uh, Tuesday the fourth graders dressed like it was the 80s. Wednesday the second and third graders dressed like it was the 70s. The school also invited former staff members to a reception in the library after school. Um, I can say it was very well attended. It was nice to see such a crowd that was there. Um, we ended up having Thursday kindergarten and first graders dressed like it was the 60s. And then on Friday, they wore their uh, 50th birthday party t-shirts that were uh, purchased by home and school. Uh, they were treated to the music of Frank Worth, who's an Elvis tri tribute singer and the students danced during an all-school sock hop in the gym. They were treated to ice cream provided by Freddy's frozen custard and steak burgers of uh, Pays. So it was uh, quite a week they ended up having. Those are the spotlights. Very good. Any questions for John on the spotlights? I got a quick question, probably showing my age here. But is that radio station, it's gonna be online radio? Mm -hmm. <coughs> And we're trying, I mean, that, that's another, when, you, when we identify the woodworking piece, there's a new piece of equipment that makes that possible. Okay, when we're talking about the radio, it's taken some other new pieces of equipment to make that ready. So we're trying to end up uh, updating and make things uh, um, well, more current and provide more opportunities in those areas, in both those classes. Thanks. Very good. Any other questions for John? Next item on the agenda is the report of the superintendent. Turn it back over to John. There are three items I wanted to speak on. We ended up having, uh, a couple weeks ago, I know that you would have been aware of, um, well, now Governor Collier, who, who came <coughs> made a visit, actually on the day that he was sworn in as governor, the same day he had came here, and he ended up touring uh, some different locations, but one in particular was Westside. It was really great to end up seeing his uh, interest and his, uh, uh, his work in trying to identify the needs that exist with education and, and mental health. And uh, Westside has been in existence for around 25 years. Uh, he, he's been well aware of that because um, well, this is Hayes' home for him. And uh, he's, I think I was told uh, when he did come, this was the fourth um, educational uh, slash mental health uh, uh, location in the state that he had vi visited and and all four of them were, were quite different and trying to see what uh, what might be possible uh, in the state to try to help in those particular needs so it's great to be visited for that reason it was not just because of um, 
Hayes being home, it was also because really we have a we have a particular facility that's quite different than than uh, than most have in this state, and uh, that is West Side. So we ended up having um, also a meeting this last week. Um, it was on homeless uh, in Hayes, and what was amazing, there's over 20 individuals that did show up. I would say. Just to guess that of the over 20, there was probably at least 15 different organizations that were represented there. And when I say organizations, service organizations in, in the city as well as churches, and the representation was uh, um, very good. It was a matter of questioning. Um, I think that there's a, a little bit of a, a mistake that can be made if, if you don't see people um, walking on the streets and having tents set up somewhere in the park that uh, we don't have homeless issues and and the conversations were very good in identifying that that Hayes has needs as well intending to those those concerns and those individuals that need help in this city so it was I thought it was uh, well attended and it was a very good discussion I think there'll be more on that at a later time as well uh, we did have a, a Kisa visit now Shanna is going to speak on Kisa a little later in this meeting too, but our meeting in Salina, which is great to end up having this set up, um, arranged kind of um, uh, through, through Smoky Hill Service Center, we, we ended up having Emporia, Junction City, Salina, and Hayes. So we had those four school districts working together, um, trying to end up, uh, again, putting together our, our needs and what what our procedure is going to be in our in our accreditation process <coughs> and again I think it's really helpful instead of us being isolated doing it just by ourselves to have a, a representative group that shows up and works with one another <coughs> and, and shares ideas and it was a very helpful um, day of, of training uh, there at Salina so those were the three Very good. Any other questions for John on the report? Okay, moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is the consent agenda to include the board meeting minutes for January 29th, 2018, personnel transactions. Uh, and I do want to point out in personnel transactions, we do have a retirement, uh, Carolyn Young, who has been with the district. She was an op occupational therapist district wide. She's been with the district for 25 years, or I'm sorry, 24 years. So we want to thank her for all of her service. Um, also, the approval of the bills in the amount of $2,572,120.44 and the approval of surplus items. Would entertain a motion. I'll have a motion to approve consent agenda. Okay, been moved by Board Member Adams. Second. So, first, seconded by Board Member O'Borney. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Moving on to old business, and we have the technology replacement schedule. I think uh, Scott is here to share some stuff. <coughs> uh, good evening. So a couple weeks ago, we did present <coughs> the uh, student replacement schedule. I know the feedback from that meeting was uh, asking to overlay the staff devices in there as well so we added that in and i know that conversation went further uh, to request as far as what the capital you know expenses would look like uh, across the rest of the department as well not just the uh, uh, <coughs> student or staff devices so we said we added that in a uh, couple of the points on there you can see underneath uh, the network uh, is funded over two years. Um, that was done back in uh, around 2014. At that time, we did not <coughs> leverage E-rate for that, but you know, assuming E-rate is still around at that point and uh, equipment is eligible, you know, that is definitely something that could offset costs at that time. And then the 21-22 <coughs> school year or excuse me, the 22-23 on out on the student devices and then that last year on staff devices, that was just the average <coughs> cost from the prior four years and that's just to hold 
the the cost out there uh, just so you didn't see <laughs> come that year that you know there was a two hundred thousand dollar drop and wonder you know what what was going on that year so uh, that's basically it in a nutshell uh, is there any questions on that anything I can elaborate on Do you have any idea on the e rate stuff as far as what what have what have you generally been seeing as far as the recoup uh, right now we are 70% uh, eligible uh, okay. category 2 funding uh, that basically as it sits now category 2 funding would cover anything uh, to get that internet uh, from our provider to the student okay. uh, there are certain parts of that that they don't include uh, network managed or uh, monitoring software like a NAC that's not included um, and there's also <coughs> other you know, little bits and pieces to that uh, the fact that our data center does not sit on school property uh, any equipment in that data center is not eligible but access points switches things of that out in the school are so you know it's very reasonable to assume if e-rate's still around category two still something they fund at that point in time that a good chunk of that network cost would be e-rate eligible and that's going to be the Stuff for 23, 24, and 24, 25, the 125,000? Yes. Um, and it, the work would be done in the 24, 25 school year. It was just that that budgeting over two years kind of kept that spike from coming back. <coughs> I'd like to just share the reason why Scott is saying if E rate is available mm -hmm. is the last few years, if you're unaware, they've made it um, a little bit more. Difficult to to receive. I mean, they're they're paring it down. They are. They're they're moving out of because they used to fund you know telephone things like that. I think this are actually our last year. We're ten percent eligible this year, but starting next year, our telephone none of that will be eligible. So it was taking money from that and redirecting it more towards the broadband and getting that into the classroom. Um, I do have with me tonight also our uh, two community. Uh, members from the tech committee as well. I know interest was expressed or maybe questions for them if there are any, but uh, they are here tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, actually, yeah, I think I requested that, so I should ask a question. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the answer was uh, yeah, being sure that the investment that we're making in the one to one will benefit the students upon graduation. I mean, we worry about test scores and all that, but I'm also worried about workforce readiness, career readiness. Can you elaborate how you see the plan here doing that? Are, are your, part, your part particularly in giving some vision to this? You know, from <clears throat> from my from my point, translate from my point. You know, when I hire somebody, they're typically coming out of a out of Fort A State with an INT degree, so they're already fairly fairly computer savvy. Um, <clears throat> I do know from our standpoint, Hayes Medical Center, <laughs> we know we see um, a real shift in how um, nurses adapt to technology. And we've just gone through a huge upgrade over the last couple of weeks, and you really see the the younger people adapting and learning much much quicker than um, we had seen prior. So from our standpoint, you know, it's important that people learn these devices and be flexible. So you know, we're we uh, have a lot of different devices, so being able to adapt quickly is is pretty important to us. But, you know, from my standpoint, most anybody that works for me is, is coming out of a computer science degree, INT degree, out of out of Fort Hayes. So uh, people are just completing a high school degree, entering the workforce, or going to post-secondary, are you seeing any benefit for those folks? Or you know, before, when we first went to our EMR, you, we had a lot of people just wanted paper, wanted paper, wanted paper, and we were bringing it in this brand new computer system probably 10 or 12 years ago probably more than that. Um, so we got a lot of resistance from people, but now that people are using it, it, it's it's critical to how we do business, and if those systems are even down now, and people have to go back to paper, it's it's the end of the world. So for us, technology is is is, is key. We you know we have a lot of systems in place to make sure that if we do have any type of outages, there's a backup system, and it's all computer based. Everything is uh, so everything that we do is is technology driven. So when you're looking at patient information, um, all that stuff is, is completely computerized. So having those skills are, are critical for us. Okay, and knowing what you may have heard with others on the committee, are, are you 
see that we're doing some of the right things at the high school? <coughs> you know, I, I actually have uh, have a kid in each. I have a kid in high school. I have a, a, a child in middle school and a child in grade school. So. Um, I, I get to see it across the board, and I know that we, you guys talked a lot about test scores and things like that. And I, in my opinion, it's more than that. I think a lot of it that I see is the communication with the teachers. Um, I know, like, if my kids are having problems, they have no problem emailing a teacher 9, 10 o'clock at night, and sometimes you'll get a reply. But I think the communication between the, the teachers and the um, students is really good. Um, I also think there's a ton of benefit. I know, like, um, out the high school, for example, uh, you know, um, Dreyer and Fawn still are, are teaching the advanced algebra, and my, my son was in that class. And that, uh, if he had any issues, you know, they, that use of technology, having his laptop there, jumping online, because they pretty much vi have videos for every lecture. You go back and re-review those. I think, like, you know, my days, you go back to the textbooks and you try to figure it out. Even at Fort Hayes State when I was there, you know, you'd be doing calculus three, and you'd have to go back and, you know, work through it and figure it out. And, and in those cases, I can go back and, and see those examples, you know. And, and my daughter's the same way, you know, she uses her iPad. And I'm pretty amazed how they use the iPad in the middle school. They do, they do a phenomenal job, and I see her doing a lot of her math. Um, and, you know, the middle school, I think the thing that the benefit that I see from, from there is, um, the interaction with my, my youngest daughter, um, topics that she probably wouldn't really care about. You know, they, they use the iPads, they, they videotape, and they, they make movies, and that whole interaction with that, I think, adds to the, the learning experience. But, you know, I, I, I know you guys talk a lot about test scores, but I think it's probably more than that. It's just that interaction with the, the teachers and, and bringing content to them in, in a different way. Go ahead. I like your. <laughs> that was easy. different perspective. And so now, where do you work? Uh, I'm at Hayes Medical Center. Hayes Medical Center. Yeah. Okay, so that big employer in our district, so that's important. Maybe you can tell me where you're from as well. Uh, I'm Derek Johnson. I'm with Fort Hayes State University. I'm a network engineer. Um, I don't have a lot of the uh, hiring perspective, um, but I can tell you, at least from a technical perspective, um, the people that have been coming in the last few years are far more hands-on. You know, it used to be people would have a laptop, and that was it. Now they have a laptop, phone, iPad, all kinds of different things, and they use them all differently in different ways. Sometimes I see people typing papers on their laptop in Starbucks. Sometimes they're writing on a notepad, uh, an actual pen and paper notepad. Uh, but other times you see them walking around with an iPad, just tapping things out. And me, I can't personally type on an iPad like that, but the, <coughs> the generation that's coming in now, it's kind of, that's what they do. That's how they interact with the world today. Um, so I've seen better interactions with people. Um, I don't know how good of an example this is, but uh, <laughs> I'll get emails from students um, directly about you know, having troubles in with Wi-Fi in the dorms or something like that. And they send it like a text message. Like, hey, I'm having trouble with Wi-Fi. Can you help me? No signature <coughs> nothing. You know, I'm like, okay, that's just something I have to get used to, and, and I'm okay with that. Um, but I feel like it would be a disservice <coughs> if we did not take advantage of, to, to embrace that with our, kids these days. That's the way that they are in this world and that's how they see education. And I think if we embrace their uh, social and technological desires, I think we would have a lot better interaction with them. The, the task <coughs> that, that was given to the committee was to create a, a schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, this was more of a a money task, you know, of trying to identify that. At the Fort Hayes State and and also at the medical, are either or both of you involved in putting together a similar schedule at those facilities? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm responsible for the, the tech budget. Okay. From, um, so if I have a desktop infrastructure, which is servers, uh, the server guys, the networking guys, so all things technical report to me, and then I do the budget for our uh, technology, and then I report that to our director, which takes it to the board. So does your so, schedule have similarity it's, to this? Our schedule time? is pretty much like this, where we used to be on a three-year, 
and then we kind of stretched it out. It depended on the CFO or, or the CFO prior, like the break fix. So we would, in any time, it, that would come out of operations. So, but now we're on a, 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 a schedule similar to this. The only difference than ours is like we have staged in. So we have things that are five years old that are getting replaced. And so then we know we have, like I said, something very similar. So we kind of know every year what's going to be replaced. And we're on a, a four to five year, six years sometime. But this year we had a very large uh, IT project. So it took up a lot of capital. So we tried to squeak by this year. We have, we have some things that are six years old, but you know, we, we know exactly what's going to be priced every year. And then we'll submit that, submit those dollars. Um, basically, a, 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 and it, it's pretty consistent because now that we're on that cycle, you know, we'll have a group of, you know, two, 300 computers. So we, we, we know exactly pretty close to what we're going to spend every year on, on um, PCs. And then we do the same thing for networking. We look at uh, next year and then we look at a five year plan. Um, and then the only thing we do, do above that is if there's any special requests that are driven from the business. So if some department wants new equipment, um, it'll come to a committee. We'll look at it, we'll review it, and we'll figure out what um, additional things that we'll need. But we, we set a budget for uh, networking um, and then server replacement, server upgrades, and then desktop upgrades, and then anything special above and beyond that that would require services that we couldn't provide. Alan, do you have some extra money left in your budget that you can... <laughs> no. <laughs> we just did our big Meditech upgrade and it was a lot of hours. So. Yeah, I have given some servers in the past. So, yeah. I know. I know. We try just because of the nature of our business, we just can't tolerate downtime. So yeah. we typically, you know, prior you would see SANS and stuff like that in a three year. Um, you could buy extended support, but just any type of failure is just not, not tolerated. You're seeing now that vendors are starting to go to five-year support contracts, so we always buy the five-year, and then we're looking at replacing after that. So it's just, you know, we just can't have, and like I said, as times change, you know, we just can't have downtime. There's so much, the entire hospital is so critical from finance, accounting, you know, budgeting to billing. Every aspect of the hospital is, you know, is through some type of technology. So, you know, servers, SANS, stuff like that, and, we try to get on a five-year and uh, always have maintenance on everything. PCs, we typically don't. We'll do from there. We've been pretty lucky, but we typically buy um, uh, business-grade laptops, so we spend a little more than what you would. We don't really, um, now that we're part of the, the health system, we have direct access to HP. We'll buy through there to buy in quantity just to get the best deals we can on stuff. But, you know, we're a 100% we're a HP shop. Um, we don't really go out and look at Dell at ever or any of those. We've been happy. We had z not that many issues. Uh, <coughs> typically, we'll you know upgrade <coughs> spinning drives to solid state to get a little more performance down, a little more life out of them if we can. But like I said, we have some things that are that are six years old. But, but we do have some money allocated. You know, like I said, this year was a little different because of the big. So we have some money allocated that we're ready to go ahead and start replacing stuff out. We kind of kept that capital <coughs> set aside to to be able to in case of emergencies with laptops, but you know, we, we have a fair share of uh, um, desktops, laptops, um, and zero clients is pretty much what makes up all of it. And like I said, we're 100% HP when it comes to laptops and you know, networking, we're Cisco. Nobody's ever been fired for buying Cisco, I guess is what they always say. <laughs> <laughs> might, be, might be broke afterward, but not fired. <laughs> I know that one major reason <laughs> that this was done is to end up having some kind of um, a consistency for, um, for payment year after year. But the other piece that I noticed that was very valuable when I observed the committee's conversation, uh, Scott's work with Wade and others in talking about this, is a better <coughs> understanding of what the needs are you know, over, over the next years. Uh, instead of just one person or two people having it all in their heads as far as what, what is going to be there and what's needed, it was, it was great seeing that kind of conversation and, and really a better understanding of others involved in this, um, in this process of, of what is going to be needed in the next five, ten years as we go through the process. So it wasn't just a, a money item. I'd say it was, well, uh, understanding and communication and involving a number of people of, of, um, of having that. It's, and Scott, I guess I just want to say, I mean, I, I appreciate the fact, I think we're getting in, heading in the right direction at least as far as from having some similar to what we've done with transportation the other stuff and having some sort of an idea laying this out through the years to give us an idea where we're at um, and I've said this before I mean I live and breathe technology I do it every day um, I just 
the, the part that I struggle with on this is we have just spent an extraordinary amount of money over the last number of years on technology, mm -hmm. and I don't disagree at all that this is important, but with everything else we have going with capital outlay, the fact that we haven't been able to get a bond pass and everything else, I just struggle with spending even more money at this time going through there with, with a number of other items. Again, I'm not, not trying to discount any of this that's been done. I mean, I, I think that some of this is important. I just, that, for me personally, I struggle with that right now at this point, approving even more, so. Well, I think when this was presented four years ago, there were two of us that are on the board that were here then, but the sales pitch on it was, well, it's a four-year lease, but it, the machines will last five to six years, so year five and six, you'll have the equipment, but you won't have any payments. And now, on the high school, we're replacing after three years, which, so they didn't even last for four, they're actually going to three. And so when there's a fourth year on the end, it's difficult to say, well, we're going to trust that we'll actually go four years and not two or three or whatever. And so that's the tough part. The other tough part is, and, and I think we talked about test scores last time, but not a ton. I think we talked about the concept of that we want to be able to measure the effectiveness of the machines. What are we trying to teach people? And if it's use of the machine, let's figure out a test that we can say, here's what we want to teach them, and here's how we're going to measure at the end of it if they've learned it. And then um, if it's any of those other things that were brought up last time, then how do we measure if it's effective versus just saying, well, it's technology, it's got to be good, and the more we put it in their hands. Although when we get home as parents, the first thing we want to do is take it away from them because that's all they do is sit on their technology. So <clears throat> that's kind of talking out of, you know, saying one thing in one place and one in another. But um, my other question, though, is the last lease was $400,000 a year, and that was for everything, and so I understand. But these are, that was 400000 for four years, plus all the add-on stuff that came later. And these show 250 to 360, 370 during that same time period. Is that everything, or is that, because that, that's the tough part for me as a board member, is if we say, okay, we're going to buy into whatever the plan is, mm -hmm. but then it changes. After you prove step one, which is always the big technology purchase, and then you add covers or cases and you know it puts the board in a position that they get is if you say well uh, we don't have cases we gotta have cases and we can't sit up here and say well, we're not going to pay for those because you know if we don't then they're going to be broken and yeah so and so, so looking into that on like the uh the student one-to-one -one side uh that was figuring in you know like when for instance you get to uh middle school devices that was figuring 360 per device right now ipads are running 297 right about there so that was you know allowing that uh, cost for case in there as well how many devices are there that was one of my other questions is at the high school or does that it, i mean what do you what number are you estimating for that? um at the while you're looking that up i just had a number of parents talk to me since the last meeting saying that you know some of them were saying we'd love to go bring your own device because my kid hasn't had one for three weeks that's worked and they have to share with their friends and and they'd love to be able to bring one from home but they can't and so that that's troubling to me and then I had somebody else say that theirs has been out for four weeks or their child and haven't been able to use it so yeah um, I mean with the high school devices if it's um, I mean if it's not something and relatively easy fix uh, we have to send the device to Microsoft. I mean, there's really no other way around that for us. Uh, there's Do we no not way. have any spares or anything that we I was going to say, we have loaners, out. don't we? We give out loaner devices, yeah. But as far as getting... Is there that many that are being fixed that there's not enough loaners for everybody? Yeah. I mean, we, we sent out... Oh, what was it another, I think, 140 over Christmas break. How I many mean, total do you have out there? Uh, total devices. Not teachers, but just the surface for the students. Uh, surfaces were 780, 790. Uh, we do have, actually maybe a little less than that, because we have uh, around 60 of the HP tablets out there as well. So I think enrollment's right around that 820 mark. So. Would you say some of the problem is the device? I mean, is it is it this the Surface Pro? Is that is that part? I mean, if we were one with an HP or we want to. Went with yeah. something else. Is that part of the problem? The that device is a because I know you talk about large, the, I mean, the Microsoft stopped manufacturing it. A, you know, a year and a half after 
you know, they, they basically up and walked away from it. Uh, we have the three-year warranty on it, but all that's getting us is basically a... Now, the staff we, had pros, correct? Correct. Those have been okay? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're talking the charger here and there going out, yeah. but just problems with the device, you know, not the same level. Right. How many at the middle school do you have devices? Um, <clears throat> I don't know currently. I mean, I, I can pull that number for you. That that won't be a problem. I can you go get back. You that, and that elementary is the next one. I'd just mm -hmm. be curious at each level what we have. Um, I know looking at the, the replacement itself, um, middle school is looking at... 807 devices. That's what your your numbers yeah. here are based on? Yeah. Okay. And the the way that I got to those numbers was taking this year's enrollment uh, across all 12 grades and stair-stepping them out. So trying to look, you know, four years from now, this, you know, you know, shot in the dark, this should be what the high school enrollment will be, you know, assuming the current enrollment levels stay the same. What would you figure then for the uh, K-5? Um, K through five is eight fifty six one year eight seventy four <coughs> the next eight fifty six and eight fifty six and eight seventy four because those would be split into K one two and three four five seven what was seven hundred how many uh eight hundred fifty six one year eight hundred seventy four the next okay. so. thank you John is there um is there a time table for us having to make a decision to approve this schedule or to approve any sort of plan or is it I mean actually the way I've been working on this is it was kind of a task for them to come up with the schedule <coughs> so that we don't get into that mode of spending over a million dollars again on one year um, it's not really approval as much as just knowing that the task was done and there's a schedule there the issue is more a matter of we're looking at the project for next year is the high school student machines. Um, the other items as far as middle school, elementary, some of the questions was a matter of switching out. Is there a need for kindergarten, first grade? You know, questions came up two weeks ago about that. Um, no. The reason why I say that is even with the busing piece, with the transportation, there's a schedule that exists that basically helps him work at okay he i think it's a hundred and or three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a year is what he kind of has identified to spend um i think this last year it was 290 i think is 290 thousand is what he spent on transportation the purpose of this is to have some reference to work from it's not going to be exactly but at least we're trying to keep something that's um that you can work from the decisions that we're talking about here, they can continue the rest of this. Well, actually, the next task is to work specifically on high school. And what are we looking at to try to take care of the high school machines? And each year, it would be a task of considering another and another as to what we're going to do. So time, we have, we have time. You know, this is, this is a discussion that uh, we, we do have time to work on. Okay. Can I, on that note, um, that was my next issue I was going to bring up, is one of the things I've seen that happens with computers is they're always usually the, one of the first things that get brought up about next year's expenditures. And so when you do that, you spend whatever you're going to spend on those, and you don't weigh those in comparison to buses or roofs or carpet or whatever other things that come out of capital outlay. <coughs> And what happens then is once you spend on one thing, you have no more to spend on the others or, you know, theoretically. And so to me, it seems that the way to resolve that would be to bring up all of those budgetary items at one time and hear presentations, whether it be from the tech committee or the building and grounds or whomever, as to what they need, whether it's, you know, this or that. And, and the board then prioritizes that with the assistance of the, the administration and, you know, maybe you don't spend as much in one area as you historically have. Because um, like now, we just spend what we did last year, <coughs> we did the year before, and you know, there's... Sure. 
Well, it can be done that way. I know that uh, Russ usually brings the transportation as early as he does so he can get that state bid <coughs> and be able to get those um, to him by summertime, you know, so that they're ready at the next year. Uh, technology, many times it's set this time because we usually can get them in. It's not, we don't have to have it in as, as quickly, but you could. Um, the only question there would be as, as fast as the new models that come out, the only question there is <coughs> what, what do we want? But you can yeah, have it done. As, as much talking about, it, you know, that we buy them now as I'm talking about that we look at a budgetary plan and say, here's how much we have. If it's $2.2 right. $2 million, you know, here's what we're going to spend that $2.2 .2 million on. Because I know that there's a lot of areas in the district that are doing without. And some of that's because money we're spending in yeah. other areas, and so. And see, Rusty's going to be bringing to you um, uh, some partial roof work for the middle school soon, and he's going to be bringing concrete uh, work, and that'll be coming as well in the next month. So you're right; it all it all ends up, um, you know, it, it comes to. Now there's a budget uh, working with Tracy and those individuals. I mean. Russ and Tracy works uh, regularly, uh, Scott as well, Rusty as well, in trying to identify what are the thoughts of needs that uh, estimate, you know, what, what we need to carve out for next year's budget. So that is done. It's well, just a matter... I'm just saying, like other boards I've been on, you, the, the, what, it, generally they'll, you'll take all of those at once and talk about them. And you may not be able to, you know, these may not be that such that we could deal with them, you know, have all the presentations in one evening, but right. maybe over two or three you have the presentations, but then you have a discussion about the entirety. I mean, even when I was at Fort Hayes as a, on student government, we went to Herb Songer's house and stayed there till two or three in the morning, figuring out the budget for the next year to come back and recommend to the, to the entire Senate. And, I mean, that's, you didn't piecemeal, you know, and say, well, we're going to talk about this one, and then the next one, and then the next one. You just did it all at once. And, and so it, it's, and we might end up in the same position, but it seems like you, it's very difficult to, if you've already agreed and committed yourself to one thing in one area, to go back later and go, boy, I wish we'd have known that, because we could have then allocated more money here, but sure. because we're already committed to these others, we can't. Right. And that's exactly how we do it. All departments submit their budget. You know, then the, the board will figure out, hey, we're going to have this much money. Um, we submit our top 20, let's say, <coughs> guaranteed the top bottom 10 are gone, and then that you get that top 10, and then they'll come back and basically negotiate, like, hey, what can you do? You know, and this year, in fact, my PC budget got cut in half. Um, you know, there's risk with that because then you have to realize that I may be coming back for contingency. You know, we have a contingency fund that's there for emergencies. And so there may be a point <coughs> where something happens where we have to do it. And we do that a lot, but that's, you know, we have a fixed amount. Everybody submits all their stuff. We have a committee that reviews everything. Um, and then they, they set priorities on what's the priorities for the hospital, and we go from there. Well, it kind of sounds like we're doing that with Tracy. You know, their directors are going to you and everything else. Maybe that's just something we need to see a copy of or something else. I think because my only concern would be, you know, you talk about approving everything all at once, and I'm, I'm with you on that. I like that. I like looking at the budget all together. But you always have to remember, we approve computers today in the amount of 258000 and then we go to buy them and we because we want the better tech. Well, now 296 and then our whole plan went to, you know, or buses. You know, you talked about the buses or, I mean, roof. I mean, everything's always... You can, you're right, but, but you set the budget now, and I don't, most of that stuff's not changing that drastically, but... If it does, I mean, you have to readjust. But I, I think, you know, that I agree that step one is the administration and those departments get together. But step two is the board gets that same information and makes a decision. And so at the end of the day, basically, this is the number we're approving. You know, I mean, if, if something changes, you still have to be under this amount. Right. If you say, I mean, if, if the cost of those machines triple, <coughs> we need they've got a, a budget. And they may, they, either they got to find a different machine or, or a third less. And that board meeting can definitely happen if it's not a regular board meeting or if it's a special board meeting that could that could occur. It's uh, the timing of that and putting it together. I'm saying it exists. It's more a matter of just finding the right time when <coughs> Tracy every year goes to those different departments and tries to grab. Okay, what is your thoughts for this? Well, actually, Russ's is pretty easy any year. You know, right now. Um, 
Scotts could be easier than what it's been in the in the in the recent past. Uh, uh, Rusty's is is a matter of always trying to figure out. Um, he does what he can, you know, with it. But it's more a matter that uh, that that could certainly work. You know, we have the instructional. Shanna's always with the design. I mean, every department's in a in a spot of of trying to work with uh, with the dollar amount that they they really have at this point. Um, and you're exactly right. If it was one of those cases where there was an influx of money and you divvied it out, I would suspect <coughs> that, um, no, I wouldn't. The difference there ends up being, I was going to say it'd be equally dispersed. That's not true because the way this is, there wouldn't be, in my opinion, more money that's needed for the tech because this is what's identified. Uh, or for transportation, <coughs> it's pretty set. But there definitely could be other instructional needs and just like we talked about before of trying to update our career uh, ready, our um, technology program at the high school. There's a number of pieces of equipment that we just wait, you know, to end up getting some grant money to, to, to add those because we just don't, we don't feel the program can still work, but boy, it'd be, it'd be fantastic to have this uh, $10,000 piece of equipment we just can't rationalize to commit that kind of money to it. And those are things that probably would then be considered if that kind of money was, was available at this point. So that, uh, that can be done. It's probably a June, July time frame. Is that usually? When we're working on the, the budget. That's about the time you're usually pulling all, all that together, isn't it? Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Sounds good. Do we need to look at that time frame as far as when we look at that, just due to the fact that? I would assume Scott's going to probably want computers before then. Yeah, and usually <coughs> around March is when I start asking the principals and all the department heads for that information. John and I'll sit down, start, you know, kind of doing what So we can have some of that stuff well ahead of that. Issues. Okay. Absolutely, yes. Oh, we and have if you, a lot like the easiest mm -hmm. of the budgets to. And if you're asking what early. was budgeted for this, she was prepared for, <laughs> okay, for this purchase for this next year for, right. for those machines. Okay. Right. And we can, I'll have, uh, make sure Sarah puts that on the, um, on the agenda, future agenda, so that's listed there for summer. Well, and maybe even some update or something, <coughs> March, beginning of April, something like that. Sure. So. Do you have any other questions for Scott and his team? I'd like to make a comment. Mm -hmm. I want you to share that I really like the four years, because I think it gives each high schooler the opportunity to have a new device. So I think that's fair. And then I also like the idea of the one-to-one -one for the middle school and high school, just because of textbooks, having the online textbooks possibly all on one tablet, rather than carrying all textbooks to all their classes. I do do like that idea. Wanted you to know. Thanks. Okay. Gentlemen, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <coughs> Moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is the SEIU. And basically the board will vote as far as whether or not to opt out of the Public Employer Employee Relations Act or PIRA. and then we can open it up for discussion. Yeah. I'll make the motion for the purposes of bringing up discussion to vote on opting out of the Public Employer Employee Relations Act. Okay. Been moved by Board Member Schwartz. Second. Second. Seconded by Board Member Adams. We'll now open it up for discussion. I'm a complete <laughs> ignorance on this topic. I don't, I guess I don't understand the benefits of opting out or the benefits of staying in, disadvantages. So if somebody wants to educate me, I'd be, I'll be down. 
<laughs> Anyone? All right, does anybody understand? <laughs> well, I can. There is a where <coughs> the argument, if the motion is to, the resolution is to pull out of it, I think someone needs to argue that. Correct. To do that. Okay. And then I will argue why we shouldn't. Do that. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to hear everybody's take on it personally. I mean, it's a okay. big issue, but mm -hmm. if you've got an argument for it, I'd like to hear them all. There were, I mean, last time we had several discussions, and there were some very, there were some very logical type things. You know, I mean, um, one of them was was the cost. <coughs> you know, although after our discussion, then our our only cost is really just bill. You know, um, at the end of the day. Um, I am I am against voting out, um, and just because the the key word that came up several times was the voice, um, their voice is going to be lost. I I mentioned timing, you know, and I'm going to tell you right now, in two to five years, I vote my I may vote exactly the opposite. So I, I don't ever want to be held or, or or tied down to that. But today, um, with the cultural environment that we have, I I just feel that there's distrust in the board. I feel that, um, you know, we did some changes here in December. I didn't sit well with a lot of them. I just, I don't like the negativity. I don't like that culture or environment. Right now, it does not feel like the right thing to do. And that doesn't sound like the strongest logical argument, but at the end of the day, that is how I feel, so. Thanks, Luke. Mandy had asked a question and really hadn't gotten an answer as far as benefits and, <laughs> and the negatives. The, the benefits of any union ends up being um, a recognized uh, group uh, that is able to work together and, uh, and negotiate um, different points for the betterment of their, of their group, okay? And in this case, it's existed for quite a number of years. It's, uh, it's been here since the early 70s. I think 74 is how long um, it, it's existed in this, in this district. Um, the benefits that you get from that ends up being um, them united, you know, to end up uh, coming to their employer and identifying these are the things that would make their, uh, their job better, you know, something more inviting that have a better chance of hiring uh, people into this position. Um, it ends up being the voice that uh, Luke is speaking of is exactly right. Uh, um, although would end up saying we as an employer, it's a voice of um, a, a small number compared to um, 200 and some classified positions that we have. You know, so it's uh, it's really a a small group if you're saying it's a voice for our employees it's it's a very select group of employees that's involved with that um, but it is still their voice <coughs> the process um, the negatives that come from it um, as you can speak on the negatives can be a matter of it's not always a matter of the unity um, you can end up having unions that don't agree within their own ranks and it creates its own uh, difficulty within the group as to what they want and what's going to be prioritized as they end up working with negotiations. Uh, the negatives uh, can end up being relations, you know, with, with the employer. I mean, you see that uh, at times even on TV with other union issues. Um, so there, there's pluses and there's negatives with this. It's a matter of saying, well, do, do you have to have it? Well, we've had it for a long time, okay, and it's worked. Uh, do you have to have it from the standpoint without it? Does that mean that uh, all the things that have been gained or anything that's uh, good that's related to that would disappear? Um, not in my mind. I mean, we've worked to that particular point. Why would you? Uh, we're trying to end up keeping custodians, keeping maintenance, and trying to provide the best possible arrangement that way. Um, it was not uh, this, we didn't get to this particular point necessarily because of a relationship with uh, 
I would say, are, are, are workers, you know, the, the actual custodians and maintenance. I would say we're here basically because of the leadership <coughs> of the union. And that was in question. And I guess I would speak on, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to talk with a number of the maintenance staff people and stuff like that out there um, over the past number of weeks as far as on this. Um, and I guess just to address a few things, I mean, number one, anytime any type of change is looked at, it's never a good time. Change is never popular, no matter what we do, whether we're talking about the health insurance or whatever. So, um, again, no matter what changes, whether whether we vote to do away with this or we keep it, whatever the case may be, I mean, anytime there's change involved, it's, it's never going to be popular with certain people. Um, the voice piece, I can see that to an extent as far as um, them feeling some of that as well, but I also think that I think we've had a history in this district of, for the most part, benefits that were done for teachers and things like that, staff and stuff like that, have pretty well been the same across the board for them, sans for a couple of, I think, some personal days or vacation days and things like that. So I don't think it's one of those things where I would necessarily agree with that all of a sudden, if something changes here, that they're going to lose a bunch of things or lose a voice. Um, and again, I'm not advocating one way or the other on this. But um, I think they're an important staff member just like anybody else in, the, in, in, in our district and, you know, no different as far as, you know, when we do benefits and things like that. And I believe we have several of them, the insurance committee that was formed. I believe we have several representatives uh, from the maintenance staff that are sitting in on that as well, which I think is a great thing. Um, gives them, you know, gives them an opportunity to talk with that. It's, it is things that will affect them. And I think any of those things going forward, any type of committees and stuff like that that we're doing, you know, they should have somebody on there if it's things that are going to affect them. So, um, again, I'm not advocating one way or the other. I just, I guess it's one of those things that anytime we talk about this, it's, it's never going to be a popular thing if we're looking at doing away with something that we're used to having. I'm not saying it's good or bad one way or the other, but... <coughs> I'll go ahead and speak. Um, I'm going to, I guess, clarifying is that I'm speaking against the resolution, which surprises me given my background. But uh, <coughs> part of it is that I do think that um, that uh, the one thing that does come out of having um, an organized group is that it protects those individuals from the vagaries of changing board or changing votes with that. The other is that this is just a one year at a time. We can come back next year and say, okay, that doesn't work out. That's good. Um, it does concern me about the leadership aspect of this, though, is that uh, it was unclear and things seemed to be going left and right, back and forth in negotiations in a way that didn't seem uh, clear what was being needed or wanted, and we were trying to decide on health insurance, trying to do other things. and. Um, that just it seemed somewhat spiteful in some ways. And so um, I'm trying to separate myself out from something I feel was uh, not well represented by the union, uh, and <coughs> yet going back to the fact that it has worked and worked well for this. It does concern me when we talk about voice is that this is a subgroup within the district, and there are other uh, individuals that are on a salary, you know, a you know, time card, you're making money, you're not a great, uh, being a custodian isn't necessarily the most exciting job in the world, but uh, certainly a critical piece of keeping our buildings functioning for 50 or 70 or 80 or 90 years. The fact that people come in and say, you got great buildings, but yet <coughs> that doesn't happen, um, doesn't happen on its own. It takes the custodial staff to make that occur, and it takes that there. There are some concerns that I had um, in the fact that when the help was needed in one of the buildings that my wife teaches at, that I was in doing custodial work, and I was taking TVs off the wall, and I was helping to prepare up the room to get ready. <coughs> that bothers me that um, I think we need to look more hard at the negotiations to be sure that we're sure we always have a workforce ready. Um, I should not have been doing that, not as a school board member, but as a spouse who said, help me, we have to have this room ready, and we've got one week, and it's not ready. And that's <coughs> what, uh, that does come down to where personnel are and having personnel available to do the job at the right time. So I do have uh, some strong reservations, but um, at the end of the day, though my, uh, at the end of the day, I, I think 
giving it another year and let's see what happens. Let's see if, because it has worked well in the past and I want to separate myself out from what happened in August. Because that's a emotional reaction and I'm pulling us I was going to say, and to, and to echo what Board Member Adams said, I think it is important to, to mention that that's part of the reason we're probably even having this conversation. Um, which, as, as I spoke with several several of you out there, and the other one that we, we probably wouldn't even be having this conversation had that not be the case. But uh, um, as he said, you know, what happened happened, and uh, um, we'll see what everybody else has to say. <coughs> My turn. Your turn. <clears throat> well, I do think I do uh, oppose the resolution. I do think that <laughs> representation does encourage the best workers to apply for a job. If they know they're represented, they could be willing to apply for the job that's available. I also think that representation increased, increases the odds that due process will be followed. So even if the union represents only a few folks, percentage-wise, I think that there's rules in place that, that will, be, again, increase the odds that due process is followed. And I also think that the representation allows having us uh, represent, uh, recognize PIRA and the union lets the workers know that we view them as a valuable team, not just as a commodity. That's it. John, how many uh, members are able to be represented by SEIU? Or how many employees? I think there's 18 right now that are members. I think there are 20. <laughs> Six. Is that correct? I think that's right. Twenty-six uh, custodians, maintenance. Yeah. We are at our fifty plus one. If that's what you're asking, board member Schwartz. No, that's not what I was getting at. But okay. thank you. Um, the you know, I just want to. I heard earlier today that I was the <coughs> driving force behind this, and I'm not because I think this started before I even got back on the board. So, uh, but I just want to clarify that. Uh, and, and actually, may I clarify that? This was requested to come back to the board in January several months ago before you were on the board, Greg. Right. Yes, that is true. Oh, and and I, I think I've told some of you, and, and I, I guess I'll make my opinion public, but <coughs> I generally support as a... Uh, unions uh, you know my family history is my dad was responsible for bringing the union into the Hayes Fire Department and was promptly fired for that and had to sue the city of Hayes to get his job back and so I you know that that's my early history and so for that reason I, I and I think unions I'll debate many people that say they're the worst thing ever and how horrible they are and um, that's not my opinion, I think they're actually good things. Uh, my, my problem with unions is the boards and the management that deal with them and don't hold firm to their negotiations and, and are look, aren't looking out for the best interest of their entities. And I think that's where what happens oftentimes is unions are good negotiators and they get benefits and pay and things like that that are sometimes detrimental. Uh, and, uh, you know, and so I blame, you know, to the extent that those things happen, I don't blame the unions. I understand their purposes is to go out and get the best, whatever, they get as much as they can. I mean, that's that's their job. They're looking out for their interests. It's those people on this side that have to hold the reins on the other end of it. So, um, you know, having said that, I, you know, we are one of two districts in the state of Kansas that are, that recognize this. And the other being Wichita, which we are nowhere in the near in the same boat as they are. Um, and that's where the numbers come in. I mean, you're talking about, and I don't want to seem like we're dismissive of, of the, that staff because they're important parts of our district. And I'll point out that uh, my previous time on the board, the, the administration of the board put together the wage study that helped <coughs> boost the salaries. Uh, we observed that problem, that we were having problems getting quality janitors to apply and, and remain here. And so we went out and figured out that they were being underpaid. I mean, I, they probably knew as well, but it wasn't something we negotiated. It was something we did on our own. And, and so the idea that we're out to get them is, is not really, you know, for those that think that, that's not what we're trying to do. Uh, I still think that uh, no matter which way we go, I believe that the... Uh, 
that the board has the best interests of its employees at heart. Now, sometimes that may not feel that way if there's not enough money and it doesn't go to this benefit or to that pay or whatever. I mean, that's just the, that's part of working. So, uh, but uh, you know, and on the due process, not that I'm wanting to argue with you, but I just think that that's something, if we think that that's necessary, we can put that into place in policy form for every employee, not just those that are represented by a contract through a union. So, uh, so I'm not sure exactly where I stand on this. I'm kind of on the fence, and I don't really like to be that on many be there on many issues, but um, my personal philosophy on, I, I, I think unions are a good thing, but on the other side of it, I don't know how beneficial it is to the district to remain in this. Sophia. Yeah, I uh, prepared a little statement. I think it echoes a lot of what all of you might have said. But <clears throat> I understand both sides, what the administration wishes and what the custodians want. I think the amount of custodians in the union is a high number, and if it were less, this decision would be a lot easier. I also think with the changes we have made this school year to the healthcare and to the cross-training of custodial staff, it is just too much change at once. Although the changes were wise, it might not be wise to impose too many changes in the same school year to a group of such hardworking and dedicated staff. That remind me of one thing I left out, but, <laughs> but, <You're welcome. laughs> but yeah, that one of the things was that if we and I wanted to ask Bill this, but my understanding, Bill, is if we would vote tonight to opt out, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't be we would still negotiate until the year and a half from now. Can't, the earliest you could opt out would be after completion of the next full budget year. So if we so you could not you wouldn't officially be out until July one of twenty nineteen. Let's say we don't vote tonight and we go forward, and a year from now we decide we want out. We push that problem another year and a half down the road, right? That's right. But if we voted tonight to opt out, and we got a year from now and said we want to stay in it, could we stay <coughs> in the following year, or do we have to? Does that push it a year away to get back in? No, I think you could put, you could do that. Any, you could opt to go back in at any time. You can go back in immediately. I, I don't know what that would do for the union and reorganizing, or if they would even need to. <clears throat> Maybe a question for Esau, but uh, I mean, you can obviously opt back in any time you want. It, it, it's you know th this decision really doesn't need to be made until June. Otherwise, you are going to have to put it off for another year. Uh, you're still going to have to, because we don't have a contract for the next budget year starting in July 1, so we're still negotiating with SCIU for the next budget year. It's contract. And then the, the last thing we talked, there was a lot of talks about the changes that were made in December, and, so we and I understand there was a lot of pushback on that initially, but it's my recent understanding that that I think those are actually most people have gotten on board and think that those were actually good changes. So I, I don't know if that's true or not. There are some janitors here, and maybe they could say yay or nay. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some that think they are and some that don't. But uh, oftentimes changes are such that even in my own life that you fight them as hard as you can, and then they, they realize, oh, they, they weren't that bad, and maybe they're actually the same thing. So. You know, John did say one thing, and I just want to make sure it is very clear. This this was brought because the board did ask for it. You know, the, this the the reason why it's being brought right now. I mean, the reason why it was brought up in January was because the board asked for it to come back mm -hmm. to us, and this was early in the year, this school year. I just it want to make just, sure that you know it wasn't right. something the administration. I mean, we did ask for that. Right. I, mean, I just want to make sure there's no. No confusion on that or, or misrepresentation. I mean that that is that is on us. Then on us that is on the board. <coughs> Before the board. Yeah, yeah, Before on the board six months ago. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to stifle discussion, but I would, in light of Bill's comments, I'd make a motion that we table this until either. I'm not sure how many meetings we have in May, but if we have two, I. would Make a motion to move it to the second meeting in May or the first meeting in June, whichever is earlier. Now, there, that's fine, 
but my understanding too is there is some advantage for um, for the union too not to press it clear up to that particular day. I mean, there, there. If you're if you're going to still address this, I would say May. I, I wouldn't say June. Okay. I mean, it's and I'll make I'll, I'll amend my motion to make it the first meeting in May. Do we need to rescind the, the motion to vote tonight? Mm -hmm. No. Can I ask a question? We still have that. <laughs> the first motion is still on. Okay. The second, yeah. <coughs> but it could be a motion to table it till May and get the specific date, time it comes back. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a motion to table until a fixed date. It's not even. Yeah, so that's all. Who has to make that motion? Is it anybody? Well. I Make which motion? I think Greg. There's a motion on the table. It needs to either be seconded. Well, and we'll discuss it. It was. The, the, we've been discussing it, but you're make, you want to make a motion to table until May. So the first meeting in May. May. First meeting in May. Second. That's the way I understand. It. As long as we table, we just have to have a return date. Otherwise, it never has to come back. And that's the first. I think he's saying the first meeting in May. Yeah, okay. I think. So you're, but it's tabling. Right. 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 Not modifying much. Did you second that? Did I hear I'll, that? Right? I'll okay. second the table okay. until May, but May. So now you have discussion. But I think we That's have what I'm going to open up that way. Natural Mandy date. Can. We have to. I think we have, we need to have an actual date so <coughs> we can come back. Okay. From May 21st. Is the first. What's meeting? the first one? We only have one meeting. Who's on in April? The 30th would be the second. I would amend my motion <laughs> to April 30th. Then. <laughs> April 30th. Okay. And I will amend my motion. Support that. You will amend I'll your second. second. That, uh, okay. Dave. It's been moved by Board Member Schwartz and seconded by Board Member Adams to amend the motion to table this until the first meet, or I guess April 30th meeting. Just leave it at that. We will now open it up for discussion. I just have one question. <laughs> That's on the table. What, what are we hoping to glean information wise between now and that meeting? Mm -hmm. Clarity for me, I don't know. Clarity for you? Just need more time to think about well, it. Well, may I say, Mandy, if this would have been brought to the table in October, I don't think it would have been tabled. I think there would have been mm -hmm. action. I think so, too. Yes. So is there a difference from then to now versus now till April? I'm just saying time yeah, does no, I, I get it. play a role. I understand. I got it. Good point. And we, yeah, we will have negotiations between now and then. So. But we have to vote for the table or not. That's. The, I think that in either we have further discussion on it or vote on it or the other on table. And that's what we're open for discussion right now, as far as on tabling it right now. I need so. to leave, so let's call for the vote. Okay. <laughs> okay. If there's no further discussion, I will call for the vote on tabling it until. Refresh my memory again. April, April 30th. 30th. Okay. So I will uh, call for the motion to uh, delay, or I guess uh, tell April 30th for this motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Show of hands. So three. So motion passes four to three. What's that? I voted four. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Four. Aye. The yes votes. The nay. 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 The nay was one that last couple meetings have shared up to 30 minutes just on ideas. The last one shared some, all it was supposed to be is some thought provoking ideas. Um, uh, the issue there would be a matter of board members coming back, having two weeks to have thought on those particular possibilities and, and also to consider the, uh, the possibility when we talked last of having a a special board meeting designated just for that. Um, I would say that's the direction we really do need to go, to have the right amount of time 
a couple hours dedicated just for that would really be probably the most um, beneficial at this time. But I did want to make sure, I wanted to hear your thoughts on this, if you had any specific ideas that's uh, spun since um, two Mondays back <coughs> at this particular time. My only thought was, you know, when you look at the facility needs study, well, you go even before that, there was a, a, a bond proposal that never actually made it to a vote. But that proposal, I think, was about $110 million, or that was, it didn't get far enough along to where I think it had an actual number, but, but it was in that 100 to 110. And then the facility needs did their study, and then you had the vision team did their study. But if you look at the proposed outcome or the proposed project for each, they're, to me, they're night and day different from one another. And I, and I mean, a lot of the areas are still, you know, uh, taken care of, but they're, they're just substantially different. And so I think somehow we've got to reconcile all of that. I, I really would like to have a time where we can bring back all the information, because some were here earlier, some weren't. Mm -hmm. right. uh, visioning, even um, if we've got some representatives from some of those past pieces that could we help could explain. Yeah, a little bit more. <coughs> I think we could arrange that as well. If if you're if you're wanting those representatives to come and share, that would be fine. If uh, um, all the studies again, bring them back now, um, particularly on the financial side of what we think people will support. Because though we have to prioritize what we want, we know that we've got a, we may have a price tag we have to get that we can't exceed. Well, I think that uh, that piece I think is a little different because I think you come up with your plan, and, and then that piece becomes how do we break it into bite-sized yeah. pieces? <laughs> maybe. But have this as part of our meeting. Right, right. Just have it. We're going to gather the information. Well, if all of you are, um, if you think that is the way to go with it, I can definitely have Sarah reach out to you tomorrow and try to identify. Um, dates that, that have the greatest likelihood and what, what would we be gaining from them is my only concern gaining from well like if we had i don't know the facility needs committee i don't know who would come back from that but if you would have them come back i mean one memories are going to be faded but two i mean the plan is there we know what the plan is the vision team i mean we, we well, know what that plan is the the point you make is is solid from the standpoint more people <coughs> trying to hit a particular date is going to be harder you know to do uh trying to get all of you uh, getting all board members together is its own <coughs> challenge for two hours uh, trying to do my own homework of understanding the projects of the past and do justice to share that. If I have to do the homework of going to talk to those representatives, that, uh, I could do that and try to be able to. Some of you have your own memories and, and thoughts on that too that can, because you're involved in, in a number of those. Not Some of you weren't involved with uh, any of it and some of you are involved with every bit of it. You know? So we can go that route. And if there is a need, I guess in some ways I like that better too because we could definitely, I think we have a better chance of getting our group together and talk and then we can have a plan that even spins out of that of who do we want, I mean, what parts do we want to do after that. Um, uh, we may want to have a uh, committee group again and it could be you know, our work from that uh, special board meeting to identify who that may be. But I guess one question I have, and I think I might ask this last time too, but where do we, is it a building-by-building building approach? Is it a, you know, a globalized plan approach? I mean, I did. Oh, I, I'll point, answer that real quick, Greg. I, I'd, like for, I'd like for everybody to understand, and, and not just, I don't think this should be done unless you're looking at it from, and, and I don't mean immediate, I don't mean in this plan it's going to be a global, you know, that it's all district. But I think you've got to be looking at it, the whole district, even as you're doing this now. And as if it's piece by piece, that's great, but there has to be discussion of identifying the needs of the whole district at this point. And I agree with that 100%, but I guess what I'm saying is do we, 
as we talk about this, do we do it in those fashions, or do we say, hey, let's talk about this? But you know, because for me, I, I think some of the simple uh, are ways to discuss it, and maybe this is oversimplification, but to have a discussion of, you know, Washington. Do we think that that fits into the five-year, ten-year, fifteen, twenty, whatever plan? And if so, in what fashion? Because if it's not in the long-range plan, how do we, you know, when you're prioritizing the limited dollars we have to, to do upgrades and whatnot, you would you would not put them into that building. Exactly. And, and, we, and that would go for every building, I think. Well, and you, you have to, if you, if you mention Washington, you have to put Lincoln there also. And, and I say because they're the same age, much of their structure has the same concerns at this point, so, but I agree with you fully. The whole idea, you, you speak of it that way, you can also speak of it of saying prioritization. And clearly, what is the priority in this district right now? Our elementaries, our earliest, you know, earliest education uh, programs are the ones that are in facilities that are, are the worst. But you know, you and I have had discussions about how many elementary schools is the right number. Right. And if that number is one or two or four, that the dynamics change on that. If you're at one, well, you know, do you have one building that could take all of that, or are you talking about an entirely new building? Right. If you say two, that you know, same question gets asked. But I could make an argument that we have those two buildings already, and you know, then how do you handle that? And so, you know, then you're talking about a whole bunch of other buildings that aren't in the long range plan. <laughs> that, that's true. That that's that's very true. But I, I think that can. That can easily, I can try to organize that so that in our, um, <clears throat> we get to that point too in our discussion with the special board meeting. And I don't, that almost seems like, and I, maybe it's not the, the first conversation, but a, a early on conversation of how many, you know, how many elementaries do we need? Would be that question because if, if the answer is whatever it is, that changes the dynamics of all the future discussion. Well, clearly, it's already been addressed in, in this community that five was too many because not so many years ago it went to four. And there's been the discussion as, as less than four. I mean, that's been going on for the last several years. Um, the question mark if it's less than four, then what is less than four? Three? two, one, I mean, you have only three numbers there to work from. We did talk about one, and there was a um, pretty strong feeling across the board that the last time one was talked about, uh, maybe not that far, you know, maybe one's just not going to be a real consideration in this, in this community, but maybe two is. And, and clearly, I think three could very well be. Four, Four still too many, probably. I mean, you you look at numbers in in a building, and uh, um, yeah, so that that definitely could be addressed and talked about. And when you identify that, it's uh, maybe you can get kind of a head start as far as what uh, what the plan is. Yeah, this is a bit of a dilemma. I mean, a lot of the things you bring up today are the same same things the busy team has struggled over, and. Uh, I think the very first day, most of us were excited about a brand new high school. And then as we worked through the next day or two, we realized that's not going to happen. And we also need to, we need new elementary schools. So we shifted to saying, okay, how many schools do we need? And then we build, we have three elementary schools. What does that allow us to do with the middle school? What does that allow us to do with the high school? And that's some of the, some of the discussions we had. But uh, obviously that didn't go over very well, so we do need to revisit the issue. Um, I could probably do an okay job of describing how the vision team worked and see the ultimate uh, plan we came up with. It might be a better idea to have somebody else from the team come on, come into the room and explain the process. Uh, not the process, the outcome. And then if we can look over the facilities needs assessment, I'm not sure we need to have someone walk us through it, but I don't think I've looked at that for years. Yeah. What's that? I don't think I've looked at that plan for quite a while, so I need to refresh my memory. Well, I guess the, the you know, one of the questions I, I have, and I was on one of those and not the other, so that's, mm -hmm. you know, part of sure. you know, the difference, and, and you probably have it from the other's perspective, too, but, right. you know, how, how do you get from, 
you know, from wherever you started to the end and, you know, how they did. And, and But you've got administrators that were, were participating actively in both of these. Now, obviously, we have different superintendents at that, but, you know, you've got... And, one thing that changed, and I think might be more symbolic of the change, was you had two different architect firms. Yes. And but that's that's problematic for me in that they have that big of a sway on the plan. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. you know because if if you go look at a building, it's either functional or not. You know, and the, and yeah. and so that, that I don't know. No, I agree. Of course, they were leading the discussions, but. Um, like I said, the group, when we walked in, we were, I think a lot of us were excited about the new high school. But again, as we looked at the <coughs> it was one thing, we did, we did shift our attention to elementary schools. Plus, they did a survey that indicated that more folks are interested in new elementary schools or updating them. So I'm not disagreeing that the architectural firm led the discussion group, but I don't know if it was I don't know if they had a preset plan in mind and they just, you know, fooled us into believing it was our plan. So you, but you're, what you're saying, you guys followed more of the, the surveys did. than... Well, that was one part of the, the survey that led folks to go, oh, wait, let's think about elementary schools. And then we, we went from there. Once we decided we needed, once we decided we needed, and I made a mistake, uh, three elementary schools, um, and then allowed us to then say, okay, then what do we do with the middle school and the high school? One concept I always thought, but you know, and I don't say it's the right way to go. Obviously, it failed, right. so we need to revisit. It and, get it. <laughs> yeah. and the one I was part of failed too. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the the, the one thing that uh, the, the whole single elementary school idea came up because years ago, and Shannon will remember this, we had I think three architect firms came in to pitch the district selecting one of them to be our architect going forward and I think HTK got selected out of that but I don't think they're the ones that did the Atchison School District but when they came in or when one of those three came in and showed what they did with Atchison and built one elementary school closed the rest down and what got me was the potential savings to the district <coughs> by doing that now way back then Will Roth had uh, run numbers that were conveyed to me that there could be as high as a 25% savings, and and when I hear those numbers, I'm going, well, you know, how do you not go that direction? Uh, now, since that time, I've heard that in Atchison it was probably more in the 12 to 15% range, but that's still a pretty big number. And so for me, if you and I don't know what it would be to if you could achieve anything like that, but but if you can. If you can justify expanding, renovating, building new, or something like that, and you're going to save money, because I, I think the scary part about it is for anybody. My kids are out of elementary, but I think I would be in that position if I had a kid starting or in that my kid's going to get lost, or potential to get lost in a big elementary school. But I think that the classes are going to be one of the benefits you have the ability to shrink the classes or to manage the load if you've got some some children that have a lot of special needs that are you know you might be able to either put them all together or spread them out just to, to you know or you know maybe you have a teacher that's more geared to deal with it and if they're if you've got smaller buildings that allows you some ability to, to manage the class load to handle those and it just that was and that was also some of the cost savings and you know I don't know the right answer to any of that, but I'm, those were all things that were sounded appealing to me. Oh, I think there was, you know, one of the ideas that was discussed was to put all the elementary schools into the middle school, all the elementary kids in the middle school, put all the middle school kids in the high school and build them in high school. And then there was a lot of discussion and concern of parents that, oh, all the elementary kids in one school would be too much, would be scary. I, I go, okay, I could understand that. Maybe it's something to look at. And, and I do believe that it'd be nice if we could work from logic alone, you know, the data, try to work from it to how would you save the most money. Um, how, um, there, there's another idea that, it came, that came up at an earlier time of a, a K-1 building, a 2-3 building, a 4-5 building. Um, the rationale behind that's as solid as can be as far as instruction and as far as professional development. And, but again, the one key 
element is how many transitions do you have for those children and how many different dropouts uh, drop offs for for parents and there there, there are plenty <coughs> of solid plans that can come about but we're not just working from data and logic Un unfortunately we're working from also feelings and uh, and a public culture as to what what they want you know and and when you try to use surveys and try to do your best to figure out what what will work, um, what does this community want to move ahead, um, that's what we're in process with. Um, the conversation's fantastic. The the last two bonds for anybody to say that they were they were miserable and uh, it was just a, just a sad process, um, they're wrong. I'm, I'm sorry, they're just wrong. The process has value of trying to end up, if you allow yourself to work with it, you know, you use that information and you move on with it. Um, there is no doubt, you see, the, for anybody in this community to say, see, we just don't need it. Now, that's, that is a mistake. There is a need. There has to be something done for the, for the future of public education for the facilities here. The question is just, what is that? And we need to use what we've already done and work from that point to, to get something started. Now, I do also, just like we talked a little bit ago about time, time can be your, one of your best helpers in this process. And when I say time, I mean putting together a plan, having something that works immediately in the next year or two, great. But to have the right plan so that down the road, maybe, what you have planned 15 years from now, 10 years from now, is uh, the right time at that point that really it, it could happen. And uh, I think it's just execution and trying to make sure that things work in, in the stages that you're trying to, to plan for. So but that is the hardest part of a Board of Education. I think it's it's a matter of trying to end up not looking at just the decisions right now, but trying to make that decision of what's it look like five, ten, fifteen years from now, and and this is the biggest one. You know, it's the biggest amount of money. It's a matter of the backing of the community to support and believe in it. Um, it's it's a monumental uh, project, and it's not just a matter of if it came down to one building. If if that's all it came down to, it's one building. That one building could be done the right way that it makes the step that 10 years from now something else happens that's, that's even much more significant. <coughs> so we'll, we'll set a meeting and, and have something. One last point. I do want to be clear when I talk about the savings we would have for those buildings. That money doesn't go to the, any special fund other than education. It's right. it's money that we save in one area that we're going to reinvest into all the students. So if we save, it's not going to be a savings, but it's going to be it, it, it is where we're going to save money here, but we have it to use on other things that we've been doing without for years. That's true. concepts that you put together with the rest of us? I'll sure have them if you want to look at them again and if you want I can because I never sent them to you I mean I can I can send them to you tomorrow if you would like to have them. I think it'd be good if we all like took a look at it and prepared ourselves before we met together okay and kind of also thought on the idea of how many elementary schools we would want because I feel like that's kind of where the conversation would begin. Okay I'll send them tomorrow. <coughs> you know um, the education experts we were listening to indicated the, the four four section school is the best way to go and that's what we were honed in on but if you have other information that mm -hmm. says okay but a five section school is okay or a six section school is okay too that'd be nice to know or 12 well, or 12 section is everybody supporting 12 section let's go for it well, and I think it's, I, if I remember right, I think it was somewhat just because we still had some of them that still have three sections that they were saying yes. four was where we needed to at least shoot for. I, I don't know that they necessarily said four was the best, did they? Yeah, that, that's the way I took it. Maybe I'm wrong. I think four has some um, positives. We look at collaboration, you know, right. four people collaborating right now when there's just two that stuff three right. sometimes can cause issues. 
just for the most efficient, you know, you could have one PD person who could then maybe cover all those classes or as you get larger. So I think that was the research, but yeah, I made some notes too, just about what's out there and what research would say. Keeping in mind too, redesign and what we want our elements are supposed to maybe look like. Is <coughs> there a best size for that? So lots of things to look at. No, you may be right. Maybe I misinterpreted heat. And that may have just been the way four I took it. Is the way to go, and as four was the best, so I was probably yeah, I, that probably is the way to say it. At least four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's how many total sections now? Twelve. Eleven. Eleven. Twelve. We were build, We were adding twelve to build four. To, to build on to where we had room for growth. So we have twelve. Three then, right? Yeah. Is that, am I looking at that right? Yes. Okay. So we have eleven, but we were going to hopefully get twelve sections with three schools, so they're all equal and even. Have room to grow. <coughs> Four, four, and three, with the hopes of going to four, four, right? <coughs> well, the four, four, four was the idea of not just growth, but a matter of uh, smaller class sizes. Oh, so you <coughs> think if we did that, we'd do that immediately? You, oh. It wouldn't be waiting to till we had growth to add that twelve section. You well, know, that would be part of the. That was oh, one of might. the. Uh, that was the rule. I think right it was for smaller classrooms. Right-sizing classrooms. Right-sizing, yeah, yeah, that was the... And when we were working to the budget, adding those right. teachers out, I mean, That was what that right-sizing thing staff. meant. Yeah, right, right. That's what the right sizing <laughs> Okay. I Anybody? I forgot details. I must be blocking them out. <clears throat> My experience. Anybody have any other questions for anybody on the long-range facilities planning? Moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is the administrative contract renewals. I'd move to approve the administrative, er, well, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would move to, uh, I don't know, what, I, I don't know to I guess I would move to renew the superintendent and assistant superintendent contracts. Okay, it's been moved by, 2018, 2019. Yeah. been moved by board member Schwartz. Second. Seconded by board member Adams, who will open it up for discussion. <coughs> yeah, it's more of a question just to explain to the public who may look at this. What are some of the professional memberships to cover that part of? Because it talks about it in both these I didn't associations. Hear. Well, board member Adams, what, what, I'm sorry, what was that question again? The professional, it's like section, section eight. eight. You're just you're talking about the organization? Yeah, just what oh, okay. organization okay. was that. In case somebody were to look at it and say, well, what's that cover? Okay. Well, organizations would be USA. We, we end up having, um, tied to that, I, I end up having organization tied to the superintendent association as well, which I get information from them that uh, helps at a national level as far as items that are pressing. Um, just, just other people might be curious. Just, yeah. just Okay. <coughs> I think through the service centers, you know, that we, um, we are a membership of two, and so we have different professional right. organizations who are part of that way. Well. We did this year, the districts paid for some of the state level. Um, we're trying to add more back. That was one of those professional development where we got to have the dollars. So okay. prioritizing what's most important. Well, I think in the past, it used to be that, you know, some didn't go to it or weren't members are involved a lot in all of them and the boards in the past decided that they thought it was important that they do get involved and do belong to those and so it was you know if, if you want them to be involved I think you've got to invest the dollars sure that, that was all. Okay. John I just wanted to ask again because um, I think you brought it up the last one and, the, and it was your wish to have your contract a one year rather yeah, than the two year it was previously yeah, technically you wouldn't be renewing my contract because mine was <coughs> two year and it would go next year anyway. It'd right. be renewing It'd be for another year. Shanna's. After that. Right. Yeah. You know. Okay. And and I'd probably need to amend my motion too because yeah. it, it probably needs to, to be a motion to authorize the board president to enter into a contract with the administrators or for the superintendent and assistant superintendent as presented. Okay, motion has been amended by board member Schwartz and seconded by board member Adams. <coughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 
bring my document back up here. <coughs> uh, next item uh, is the um, uh, concerning the director of special education. So I would entertain a motion one way or the other on that. I would make a motion to adopt the resolution in regard to non-renewal of an administrator's contract as set forth in the attached uh, resolution. Been moved by Board Member Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Board <coughs> Member Adams. We will now open it up for discussion. <coughs> John, I just want to be clear that uh, it's your recommendation that this is the way we go, and you're also informing us that that's also the recommendation of the other superintendents uh, that are part of the co-op. That's correct. And this would be effective essentially June 30th and wouldn't renew in that's correct. July 1. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Next item on the agenda is the Kansas uh, Education Systems Accreditation Update, and I believe uh, Assistant Superintendent uh, Shanna Dinkle has an update for us on that. We talked about taking one of the five uh, news uh, state outcomes a month um, to share with the board to give us a background. So we've been through the kindergarten readiness, and if you remember, we haven't given this survey to you yet. We will do that in August as we enter the fall of 2018 with the um, incoming kindergarten class. So that will be um, our baseline, and then we will be developing some of our social, emotional, local measures this spring so that those can also. Um, we can start measuring those as we move through the five-year piece of pro process. Just a, we, I did share graduation rates in the fall, just to review that as a district, the last two years, we were at 88.7 to 87.9, so right around the 88%, and then you can see how that compares to the state averages there. Um, our goal was 100% graduation rate, and that is one of the areas of focus through the state piece of program. So I just have another one of those short videos that we will watch um, giving us some information and some things we can consider as a district. Any questions while it's loading? Next month we'll talk about post-secondary success and that has something to do with <coughs> high school graduation. The higher our high school graduation is, the better our post-secondary success will be. While they're getting that, I wanted to say something on this particular item so you're aware. 
on any of these on any of these it's a matter of trying to identify and, and improve in your district it's not a matter of saying you know, we're identifying maybe two different areas to improve they're going to be specific somewhere else all of these particular items are set like we must end up always trying to improve our um, graduation rate and we are looking we even had a visit to another school just in the last week of a program that exists that's supposed to end up doing just that of helping uh, overall graduation rate uh, in in a high school uh, that visit was done by some high school personnel and went to Salina Central uh, they have a program that they've been using and so we're, we're working on that trying to see if there's another program that can help to get uh, those students who um, just are at risk of not graduating at this time so quick question about that we always want to increase our some Well, it, and, and I know it does. Uh, and, and that's kind of even the feeling there is that it's going to. I think we're supposed to be in the mode that we shouldn't have the acceptance that there's going to be a limit there. We should always be trying to get everybody. We should, our mindset should be 100% is going to graduate. Right. All right. And they'll talk in there. I mean, it'll, it, a lot of times we think about graduation rate as a high school issue. We really need to rethink that. And we talked a lot in our PISA meetings with our district leadership team. It really is a district issue. When, when we look, if we would name the, those students that do not graduate, I know their elementary teachers would be like, yeah, they struggle. I just couldn't make that connection. We all kind of know who those kids may be, or we're not surprised, but we need to start earlier interventions and building relationships and doing those things so that it's not, yeah, and that we're not surprised. Yet. So we need to make it a district focus, not just a high school issue. So I'll we'll talk a lot about it. I think um, the video captures a lot of that information. Thank you. Hello. Welcome to the module on high school graduation. Just over 40 years ago, 72% of all jobs in the United States required only a high school diploma or less. These were good paying jobs that provided workers a livable wage and the opportunity to attain the middle class and above. Today, the percent of jobs requiring a high school degree or less is just 36%. What's even more sobering is that of that percentage, those without a high school degree will qualify for just 12% of all U.S. jobs. <coughs> jobs is not likely to even provide a livable wage. To give students the best possible chance for success, Kansas schools must not only increase the number of students graduating high school, but increase the number of students graduating with skills and attributes needed to be successful. In Kansas, we define a successful high school graduate as having the academic preparation, cognitive preparation, technical skills, employability skills, and civic engagement to be successful in post-secondary education and the attainment of an industry-recognized certification or in the workforce without the need for remediation. So let's break down these five key areas of the definition of success. First is academic preparation. Academic preparation is defined as possessing foundational knowledge in core subjects with the ability to understand key terms and to link ideas and concepts across content areas. This is what we as educators do every day. Are our students mastering the academic standards set forth by the Kansas State Board of Education? Cognitive preparation is the ability to formulate problems, conduct research, interpret and communicate information with precision and accuracy. In other words, can students apply what they've learned? Technical skills is having the abilities and knowledge needed to perform specific tasks. Hands-on skills, if you will. Employability skills include workplace skills, such as managing time and other resources, and communicating effectively with others through speaking, writing, and listening. <coughs> Employability skills also include interpersonal skills, such as the ability to collaborate as a member of a team or work independently, and the ability to maintain a positive attitude. Personal qualities also fall under employability skills. For example, responsibility, self-discipline, flexibility, and initiative. Civic engagement is about people sharing their skills and knowledge through actions intended to improve communities, states, nations, the world, and themselves. It's also actions and attitudes associated with
associated with social participation, such as voting, volunteering, and donating money. Think the responsibility for graduating successful students <coughs> falls squarely on the shoulders of high school educators? Think again. From the very moment a student enters kindergarten, every educator, K through 12, shares in the responsibility of preparing that student for success, year by year, skill by skill. When we think about being prepared for success after high school, we have to think about the whole student. Did we as an educational system prepare our students to be socially and emotionally able to persevere when things get tough? Did we help students build character skills such as conscientiousness, responsibility, and reliability? Did we provide students with real-world experiences to help guide their career exploration? Did the courses, activities, and experiences throughout their educational journey prepare them academically, cognitively, civically, and technically for employment and or post-secondary education? As a district, it's critical to maintain continuity across all building plans to ensure students are attaining the skills needed to be successful after graduation. But none of this really matters if we don't get students to the finish line. According to the University of Chicago's To and Through project, which focuses on helping more students make it to and through high school and college. Being on track at the end of freshman year, meaning that the student has no more than one core class failure and has enough credits to be promoted to the 10th grade, is more predictive of a student's likelihood of graduating from high school than poverty, chronic absenteeism, mobility, and prior achievement combined. In fact, this project found that students who pass all their freshman year core classes are 80% more likely to graduate than their peers who failed one or more classes. Attendance is another predictor of success that needs to be addressed. The two and three project also found that each week during a semester that a student is absent their freshman year, their probability of graduating high school declines by 20%. Implementing supports to help students who are struggling with attendance may be the difference in whether a student graduates. And we would be remiss if we didn't stress the importance of parent involvement. Planning family activities, sending notes home, providing project updates, and regular email communication are all ways to create engagement to make parents an integral part of their students' cognitive learning. As leaders of districts, buildings, and classrooms, you have an important opportunity to continuously evaluate the effectiveness of your school system and to embrace changes that will meet the needs of each student. As teachers, we must strive to provide rigorous and relevant learning that ensures each student is well prepared academically when they leave our schools. But in order for this to happen, we have to be responsive to the culture in each class and build meaningful relationships with each student. Understanding students' passions, interests, and preferred learning styles will enable us to create personalized learning. It's also important to utilize professional learning communities, or PLCs, to build cross-curricular meaning for students. This PLC time is also an opportunity for all administrators and teachers to share what is and isn't working for individual students across content lines. Today's students are the future workforce and future leaders of Kansas. We as educators have a responsibility to not only make sure our students graduate, but to make sure they graduate with the skills necessary for a successful future. Thank you for your time and attention to this module on high school graduation. Conversations we'll have early release is coming up this Wednesday. Um, so between Kisa and some of the different foundations things we're doing this year, trying to build those relationships and work on positive behavior, that's sinking a lot of our professional development time that we do have planned. Yeah, I do, do have a question. It talks about more PLC time. What is that? Uh, do we have sufficient time, or is this something that should be negotiated back into? Uh, we're moving to that next topic, but. I, I mean, that seems pretty critical, and from talking to some of the Mercury and Gemini schools, that's extremely critical. But do we have sufficient time to achieve this in our schedule with the teachers? I, I mean. The time we have, we do go ahead and, and make PLC time a priority, I will say that. I know within buildings, there are some um, where it happens, it's harder to happen district-wide, especially at the elementary level, getting all the... Um, 
teachers together so we can always use more time uh, it has been a priority and we have tried to designate time that we currently have we know that our professional learning calendar can't maybe fulfill all our needs so we may do early release with subs to try to get those plc times together so could we have more yes but then we're sacrificing instructional time at this point okay because that seems like uh, critical to have and it does it looks like also speaks to that what we were talking about earlier with the right sizing of classroom if the teacher is expected to make that relationship mm -hmm. with all those kids then mm -hmm. maybe the more space is, is part of the care of the term okay all right just curious about that mm -hmm. Okay, no, you're fine. Okay. Uh, any other questions on the Kansas Education Systems Accreditation update? Okay. So then we'll move on to the next item, which is the designation of the HNEA and SEIU negotiating agents. <coughs> that would really be for the board to decide <coughs> who you want to be um, those those agents. Now, there was a little bit of talk earlier on that of maybe identifying in both areas uh, just myself and, and Mr. Jeter, and um, that that is that's fine. I think that was kind of the direction. I think we'd looked at going, and it's sim similar to what we had started last year. Um, and like I said, I, I'll probably be at those meetings, but I, probably you guys will run them. So unless anybody has anything, so yeah, they're open meetings, so I mean, but. I'll go ahead and make the motion. Okay. Is this something we're voting on tonight, or is this something that would be? I, I think we voting. would like to because we have a meeting at the end of this month. Yes. And Paul, I think you might want to look at option two. I think is the one we want. Option two. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's for the NEA and the SEIU. Oh, we have that one. Um, and I will <coughs> make the motion to designate the HN, HNEA, and SEIU negotiated agents as uh, presented in the agenda in option two, which is to approve a superintendent and board attorney as a negotiating team for negotiations between USD 49 Board of Education, SEIU for the 2018-2019 school year. Oh, I guess I thought that included the HNEA too. Yeah, that's just you one. Need to have oh, option one. one. So I guess we need option one and two, I'm sorry. Well, we need option one and two. Yes. Yeah. Or just add it in, oh, add in the HNEA. Okay. We don't need option three. So. <laughs> no. so it's been moved by Board Member Adams to approve the superintendent and the board attorney uh, as for all negotiations between HNEA and the SEIU for the 2018-2019 school year. Yeah. We have a second. Second. Seconded by Board Member O'Borney. Any further discussion? The only discussion I wish to end up <coughs> saying is all of the board needs to understand that we would have been voting, you would have been voting for the SEIU no matter what the vote would have been earlier. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. Because we still have to negotiate this next year no matter what. Right. And we're now to discussion. And just to reiterate what the board member Schwartz said, it is an open meeting, so any board member is free to attend. Is any citizen? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I, I think the only reason in the past that we had kept from that just because if we had more than X amount there, then it also turned into, well, they're here. Can they give us their, their point of view? That's the only reason I think in the past. I, I don't we, think we've had any problems. We haven't had any issues with it, so <laughs> I think that was the only reason in the past that we didn't. So and technically, it would need to be noticed as a board meeting. If there more than negotiations, of more than board yeah. Board no, actually, I don't, as long as we're not there meeting, then I think it'd be no different than being if in a public public. Business, so. But not if they're in the audience, not discussing no, it. Just, not if they're just there as 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 a deal. I think we're okay. As long so. as we say nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sunglasses, baseball cap. There you go. That's right. Okay. That's right. So it has been moved and seconded. And sure. Uh, I want to clarify. So it's open meeting, mm -hmm. and it's published on the website or somewhere when these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is it? Or somewhere? They used to be on the website, but I don't know that they are on the website anymore. Oh, I always thought they were. Okay. I don't think we do because it's not it's not a recognized yeah. no, board meeting. So it's open. Then how do we find out about? <coughs> I can find out. Okay. Calendar requests that people. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. 
Very good. Any further discussion? I, I would assume you're not going to try and calendar with all of us. You'll schedule it with those negotiators. The rest of us will just get the <coughs> which one it is. Yeah. 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 Very good. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Hayes Area Children's Center board member appointment. At and I this believe point, the one person who had shared interest was Mike, Mike. Walker. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so we want to vote him in quickly. <laughs> Before he changes his mind. <laughs> Just a point of clarification on that. It, before sure. I got off, but that was always that the board president would make that appointment subject to approval by the board. Is that not how those have been ha handled? I don't remember the last time we actually had it, had anybody on Sorry, there. I don't know. I'm talking about any appointment to any committee or sub boards or anything like in, usually they all happen in July, but it is. still done that. This one just was over Right. Oh, uh, I say because I, yeah, I could, didn't remember the last several years on this one, so. So it's special, is that what you're saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're special. That's right. <laughs> Very good. So uh, uh, that I, I will make the nomination for Mike Walker to be the representative uh, for the US, USD 49 Board of Education to serve on the Hayes Area Children's Center Board. Okay. And they, they uh, have informed me that they want to work uh, immediately in trying to fill the director's position right. since that <coughs> resignation has occurred um, and that would be uh, myself would be involved and then Mike would be involved too. Okay. Very good. Okay. So we have a motion on the table. <laughs> we have a second. Don't I don't need to go through. Okay. If I nominate him I guess we're good then. Okay. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda. The That's what I just asked. I just did the motion. Oh yeah. You said is there a second? All right. Well, we'll call for a vote then for Mike to do the uh, Hayes Area Children's Center representative. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Yeah. Motion passes 6-0. Right. <laughs> did you vote? Did have a second? I did vote it. You don't have a nomination. You shouldn't need one under Robert's rules. But, but you yeah. still need a vote, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we did that then? Right. Okay. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the summer school and driver's education fees. There is no change at this point. It's, um, it's the same. The reason why it's brought to you, it's always brought early to you uh, because of that front end work with driver's ed. And, um, Can I ask a question? Is that still a break even proposition or? Actually, it, it's intended to be, but over the last number of years um, there has been money that's been put into this there's been some gain that's come from it and because of that um, I'm trying to remember the details uh, Tracy can you share the details uh, Bruce is is going to share change some things in the program mm -hmm. right Bruce and I discussed either um, lowering the fees um, or seeing if he had other ideas and he really felt um, strongly about extending the program a few more days he thought some of the students that have not passed would have been able to pass if they had a couple more driving days he also feels that it would always be the more experience we could give them the better so <coughs> instead of reducing the fees he felt like that was a comfortable point for parents um, but then he would we obviously would increase our salaries by paying those instructors more and extending the program into a little bit right. longer time frame for this year to see how that goes and I guess that that, that would be my which leads me to my question on that is where do we stand on those? Because I know in the past we pay a fair amount to do that driver's education stuff as far as for the people on there. So how much more is this going to cost us to have them do this? Um, because no, I, I know they make a, a good chunk of change to run that driver's ed program. Well, it's not, well, you say more. It's, it'd be the same pay. <laughs> it's just a matter that there'd be a, a few days that's added to it that they'd get paid for that. So it's not increasing their... Their wages and is that something yeah. we look at ever as far as evaluating where those stand? I mean, I don't know what comparison is on those. It just seems like we pay a Actually, fair amount to do we that. We would be doing that um, when we roll around to negotiations mm -hmm. because that's listed on there of looking at pay for supplementals, and we're okay. going to be we're going to be addressing all of those okay. when we 
roll into negotiations okay. at this point. Okay. Good. But, and that's the proper time to do that. But just to clarify, the question that was asked was, is it break even? It, it is actually profitable, it's and that's profitable. why he okay. decided to that's go ahead and extend the program. All right, that's he thought that'd be better for the students. But or once we extend it, will it still be yes. break even or profitable? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. That was the question. <clears throat> We don't want to supplement that right. program. Mm -hmm. Right. Do we need to vote on that fee so they can begin? Yes, please. That's and, why we're bringing and it to you. What about and summer school fees as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's not as important at this point, but uh, um, we're not suggesting a change. So. Okay. I guess. Can that be done as one motion? I, I do have a question on the summer school because I know you guys discussed it within the last couple here. of years yeah. and there was <coughs> some debate about $10. whether it should be the actual cost versus the discounted cost, if I remember right. Maybe I'm wrong on that. <coughs> so right now the way it's said it's out of district students, half credit is $200. In district students half credit, hundred dollars, and in district students qualifying for free and reduced lunch, ten dollars. For those <coughs> on, without the free and reduced, is a hundred dollars? Is that break even, or is that? I don't know. I know that, I, that as I recall, the last discussion on it was that should you discount that cost for people that didn't get their stuff done during the school year? I think was part of the argument. <coughs> Right. I believe the summer school program is self-sufficient. I will double check that. Um, I, and I, I recall those conversations also, and I believe at one point we had free and reduced, didn't pay anything. No, and, and we added that. And there was a that they wanted, that you wanted to um, Yeah, that was, that's the discussion I remember from last year was the $10 was to have a little bit of skin in the game. That was, the I think, was instead of it being zero. Yeah. So. Well, if there's some additional information, I'll just make the motion that driver's ed at this point if we have up some um, table okay uh, i'm all right with both if, if, both if you are I'm, I'm okay with it except <coughs> i know we had an extension i think it was about ten dollars more and yeah so okay. then i'll make a motion on approving the recommended fees for driver education in district out of district and summer school fees out of district district students and district student qualified free to reduce lunch as presented in the agenda. Okay. Been moved by board member Adams. Second. Seconded by board member Schwartz. Any further discussion? I guess we had our discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing that I'll call for the vote. All those in favor please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is discussion by board members and agenda requests. I do have a <coughs> question. Um, I'm hearing that the high school is doing the uh, parent-teacher conference different this year with the uh, students taking their parents through. And the, I, I don't know if you've talked about that here or you can hear about how the outcomes that are, but it sounded different where the student is taking the parent through and the teacher there to explain. Well, I don't know all of it. Explain their life. I, my kids are seniors, so I don't. It doesn't matter anymore. There, those damages are going to be are as good as they're going to be. I don't know, but they're. It's, uh, I don't really want to come back to that or if there's some negotiation. It sounded very interesting. I think we should come back to that and have it a little bit more polished, but I can give just an overview as the intent over the last couple of years has been a matter of changing that so that it has more <coughs> merit and they were they were trying to identify what a student's plan is. Right. You know, what is that five year plan? And the five years, not just the four years in high school, but then that one year, you know, the first year into or post secondary and trying to work with it as far as what is their scheduling going to look like. It's not just a focus on grades at this point, you know, just how did the student do in grades because if, if parents want to know that, they can get that at any given time and, and power school allows that. So the, the ske what they were wanting to do was uh, there's a number of other school districts that have taken that leap of actually identifying the plans for the students and having the students actually be there and go through it as far as what are they doing, what is their plan for next year, go over the scheduling. Uh, they can talk about grades as well, but I'm just saying most of it's a matter of their, their process through high school 
and into the post-secondary. And we can have we can have a couple people who that'd probably be very appropriate to share more information with you on what they're what they're doing. Does it does it come out of what we invested in with career crew? Yes. Yes. And that's part of why the individual plans a study video. I kind of pushed off because I want to give you more information when we share okay. that, which would be there has been a lot of work this year with career cruising. The council is working with all teachers at the high school who use seminar time to work with the students. And so these spring conferences are more conversations about what, how do we use career cruising to align your coursework now into your interest inventory and to what you might want to do post-secondary. Okay. So that's the conversation okay. piece, and it does. It really ties kind of the graduation with <coughs> post-secondary success and that individual plans to study all together. So they, yeah. they have found time this spring to be creative to do it. We did away with our spring parent-teacher conferences a number of years ago, but I know the high school um, is, is working with, with this this year, and I know there's been some some interest from some of the elementary to bring back those spring conferences, so that's something we'll continue to talk about. Um, but yes, the high school will be doing that yeah, this spring. Maybe after the experience, mm -hmm. <coughs> I think it informs us of some things that yeah. may help with even building and instruction and curriculum and all those things. <laughs> well, thanks for bringing that. I had a couple. One is, is there uh, a plan to put the uh, the TIF issue with the city on our agenda to discuss uh, before the deadline to act expires? I, I checked on that. As far as the only reason we would put it on <coughs> is if we were going to vote against um, it. Against it. But the only way we could have a discussion with that if we wanted to vote against is if we put it on, right? That's correct. But but the issue there is just a matter of um, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be an agenda item. I mean, it's and I don't know where everybody's at on it, but it seems like it would be at least something to discuss instead of just letting time expire. So that way, you know, if you found out that everybody wanted to vote against it and you let your time expire, it, it seems like it would be and it might be a quick discussion, but it. Seems like it would be something we would put on the agenda before yeah. that time. When is that decision? When is their decision? The times, the thirty days is running. I think right. it'd have to be on the next board meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I think they took action last week, if I remember mm -hmm. right, that started the so. clock. And there's thirty days, I think. Yeah. Right. And the county really said, go. Ahead. <coughs> if if you if the board wishes that to be on the agenda, it'll be at the next meeting. It does formalize. I like it. Well, that's true. Or we but were silent on the issue. And that's true as well. Too, so. Either way, formalizes it. If we're silent, Only, I mean, if you if you say right now you don't want it as an agenda item, you've already made your, you've made your statement too. Um, so either way, um, you want it on the agenda, it will be. You don't want it on the agenda, that kind of s makes a statement too. Yes? I, I would yeah. like it on. Yeah. it on. That's fine. I'd say put it on. Okay. Tip, is that part of the new conference? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the last thing I would like, and I don't <coughs> think, uh, is there an organizational flow chart as far as administrators and directors? Mm -hmm. Yes. If, if I could share that. Is it on the website? It's on the board page. And I can talk to you after the meeting about it. I just have some questions and thoughts on that. Okay. Very good. Any other discussion or agenda requests? Okay. I believe we do need a exec session tonight. Yes. Um, so I will move, or I guess two, um, I will move that the Board of Education resource into executive session along with the superintendent, assistant superintendent, and board attorney to discuss personnel matters of non-elected non personnel. No. Could, Is that the could, one you wanted to do, do first? Or you wanted, oh, I guess I switched it. I thought you said you wanted the other I, one first. I I'm sorry. The, I was using the the old form, which didn't have it switched. Gotcha. Already. Okay. So, real estate okay. Would be so we'll put the real estate Tracy first. And Tracy will be in that. Yes. That so I will move the Board of Education recess into executive session along with the superintendent, assistant superintendent, board attorney, and the business manager to discuss preliminary discussions relating to the acquisition of real property, KSA 754319B6, with open session to resume. Ten minutes. Um, in, 
Bill, refresh, refresh me how I do this again, and then I can make a motion for the second one. At 8.55. And then I will. <coughs> okay, so I will entertain a motion for that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes 6 0, and then I will move the Board of Education recess back into executive session along with the assist, uh, superintendent, assistant superintendent, and board attorney to discuss personnel matters of non elected personnel KSA 754319B1 with the open session to resume this room at. What would you think? I, I don't know on that one. Ten, 10 minutes? 15 minutes? Okay. Um, 10 or 15. Okay, so we'll say 9.05. Okay, resume in this room at 9.05. Okay, been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? So I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0.